Hi right, guys, this is part 4 of my MP3 player GPS electronic thing project. This video deals with the Spectrum Analyzer. The Spectrum Analyzer isn't a standard function of the decoder chip, but a user program supplied by its manufacturer VLSI. The chip provides a mechanism for loading user programs into it. Uh, in this case, you're presented with two massive arrays, one address array and a data array. In this image, the underlined array A tab is an array of addresses, and D tab is an array of 16 bit data. For the decoder chip I'm using, VS1003B, code size is 944. In microcontroller land, these are massive arrays, the first one being an array of 944 bytes, the second, an array of 944 16 bit words. I realised pretty quickly that I could condense that data on the chip because the first address array is mainly sixes with only seven occurrences of the address seven. For my function, the ATAB array doesn't exist. ATAB is an unsigned character that usually starts as six and then a series of checks can change it to seven. I've saved myself well over 900 bytes of program data there. Finally, in order to start the program, you have to write a hex value 50 to register address A. There's a trap there because this isn't officially documented anywhere that I could find and I found the answer in a forum where someone previously had a problem. This is one of the earliest spectrum analyzers I've got working with the default 14 bands. These kind of drawings were done just to see how things would turn out. It's still easier to draw on paper than it is on a graphics screen. Well, I think you'd agree that looks better with a border around it. And I've removed some debug information and added elapsed and remaining time. You'll notice the remaining time field goes a bit batty at the start of a track because it calculates the remaining time based on the elapsed time, the file position and the file size. This will be familiar to people who use torrent programs, which can only estimate download times based on the current download rate and the file size, but the current download rate may change. A fair way into the track now, it's a little more decisive. And of course towards the end of the track it's very stable, still not synchronised with the elapsed time, but very close. This is also the first time I made the program cycle through tracks and then auto-repeat at the end. This is a board that was working in the project before I dead bugged my own. I didn't like the way the last bear chips arrived from eBay without any ESD protection, so I thought when it comes to using one of these in another project, I'll start with one that's already been tested. I want the regulators off this board as well, but I'll do that in another session. Next big idea I had is if you move the mouse pointer over the analyzer, push it, then it opens out to full screen. So I'll see how that goes. This screen isn't interactive yet, so I just implemented a button and button debounce to switch between the two screens. Just to get it happening quickly because the spectrum analyzer is a pretty easy task. Uh, with the spectrum data, that should make it pretty easy to make some cool full screen demos now. This is a mega demo for the Commodore Amiga by Red Sector and uh, this has definitely given me an idea. 